do you say we start on something a little heavy that was asked? Uh, I believe Silfweed asked me to read this, and I think I, I think I, I will because it's not super long and it seems to be meaningful. They wanted me to talk about this, uh, and we'll see what happens. Can an atheist believe in heaven? First impressions, no. My best friend passed away two weeks ago. That's very sad, and I'm sorry to hear that. I've gone through a lot of feelings and emotions over the past two weeks. A lot of things that I've done and said conflict with my own beliefs, or at least seem unreasonable to me. I've texted him a number of times since he passed, knowing full well that no one will ever read those texts. Uh, I helped his parents clean out his cabin, and after three days, as I left the cabin with the last load of his personal belongings, I was able to take, I turned to the cabin that he lived in for nine years, an inanimate object, and I spoke to it out loud. Thank you for making David happy. Uh, I've kept a number of things that I personally have no need for, but that I feel he would be upset if he knew they were to be thrown away. He's gone, not able to be upset anymore, but I still chose to keep these things. Uh, even though he can't be upset or in pain, I felt like I was hurting him uh, as I took his belongings away. They're his things, and I'm taking them away. I can't explain why I felt this way. Logically, these feelings don't make sense, but I'm just an animal still subject to these feelings and emotions as everyone else. When someone close dies, I still perform rituals and ceremonies despite not believing in supernatural reasoning for them. So, I mean, all this is normal for sure. Uh, so, it, it, part of it is because of the uh, way that we, our animal brains, poorly process grief. Um, you know, it gives us deep personal anguish, which I don't believe is beneficial to us. But it, I mean, it shows just how strong that our social bonds are, which is a benefit to us. So, I mean, it's like a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, right? But even, you know, dogs have the capacity to fucking like grieve and stuff. Like obviously human emotion is just so deep and complex. It's really hard to be like, oh, it's dumb to speak out loud to a cabin. You can do that. Cause it's like, you know, these are, these are. This is a feeling of grief right here that makes sense to me, even though I don't like feel like I need to thank a an object or anything. But it's like you want to express gratitude to a man that you loved and uh, that you uh, miss, and it's it's hard to express in words a feeling of gratitude towards like oh, this was the living space of that person I loved and I can see all the, all the, st like, I could feel the live-in-ness of that and, and, I don't know, there's an ephemeral nature to it and that's why love is so hard to, like, describe, right? Like, even platonic friendly love here, right? I don't think this means that there's a supernatural element to it rather that there is a, an emotional element to it that is hard to describe because emotions aren't logic. Emotions are... Emotions are chemicals, and but they're also so much more because of the way that we socialize, right? So it's like, it's the intersection of all the things that make us human. So yeah, I mean, it's very interesting, but it's certainly not, yeah, I don't think you need to have some, I don't think you should be like, oh, I'm weird, even though I don't believe in supernatural stuff for like, feeling like he would be upset if I threw away his pog collection or whatever because he liked the pogs like I get that, that like, like, uh, if, if Darwin died, I would keep like, you know, one of his toys or something around, right? Just because it's like, that's for me, right? It's a memento for me. And, like, and that Darwin would be upset if he was around to throw out his favorite toy, right? That's why it has sentiment to me, right? Is that he cared for it. Not not that I'm, like, actually worried about the mechanism of making my dog mad or upset. I guess I don't, I don't think, I don't think these are like, oh, I'm, I'm supernaturally thinking. I think these are totally normal, like, coping mechanisms for grief. I was raised Christian and believed in heaven, but I left the church and slowly gave up all my beliefs in an afterlife in my teen years. Since then, it's been easy to answer when someone asks, where do you think we go when we die? Nowhere. We simply cease to exist. Uh, at least that's my best guess based on all the evidence available. Of course, no one can say for sure, but after losing someone so incredibly important to me, knowing that I'll never see him again, I don't feel like that's a good answer anymore. Don't get me wrong, it's still what I believe, but I don't really feel an, any comfort with that answer like I used to. Hmm. I'm interested in what you have to say further. Uh, but I don't think... <laughs> not to be pithy or dismissive, uh, but I don't think we don't exist anymore is... like. We just, we just, we stop existing. We simply cease to exist. Like, our consciousness ceases to exist, but, like, the impact you have while alive is real, and the, the, vo the, the, the lack of you in any space will be felt, right? And so, I mean, it's not living, but, like, 
your memories exist. And so, like, let's get hot. Hey, what are what are any of us but concepts anyway, man? Right? Like, we are we are the feelings we feel to one another. We are the conversations we have with one another. We are our constructs of each other in our heads. Like when I think of Sarah, it's I can't actually think of like a hundred percent her physical reality. I think of the construct in my head that is Sarah because I can only conceive of like, you know, how much you can know a man or I guess in this case, uh, a creature. And so <laughs> it's like, I don't know that, I don't know that you're supposed to get comfort from the answer. You know, I don't really feel comfort with it. That's not the purpose of it. The reality of death and our experience of it isn't necessarily like meant to make you feel any certain way that you don't get comfort out of it. Isn't like a failure of the reality of it. Uh, feeling especially distraught, I asked my Aunt Mary, who is a minister, where she thought David was. She explained that in the scripture she was reading that day, it states that when someone has faith, that faith extends to their whole household. David's parents are both Christian, but before I told her this, Mary told me that she had prayed that God would extend her household to include David. She explained that she is certain that David is in heaven. David's parents found comfort in this, and they too believe that he is certainly in heaven. I found some comfort in this, even though I don't share their faith and their beliefs, just knowing that she and David's parents are certain that David is happy and at peace made me feel a little better yeah i think that's whack and uh not like that you got comfort out of it just like (laughs) i don't think this helps them grieve at all i think you processing the actual death of a person and loss of them in a whole way like really wholly understanding their loss is much more like i mean i don't even know how you can like how can you appreciate a person's life if you don't understand the the finality of their death you know what i mean like that that you think that it's gonna have you're gonna meet them again but you're not like that's i think it's cruel to tell people that i don't find any comfort in it whatsoever i also don't find comfort in it if you don't think that david would really fuck with the idea of heaven as as a concept biblically is meant like it's eternal worship of God and Jesus. That's it's every day is just worship of them. That's what heaven is, to be one with them. Like that your friends and family are there also doing that is part of it, but it's like, yeah, that's crazy. Forever. Forever. Uh as an atheist, I don't have the same belief to give me comfort. I believe that everything that made David my best friend and the wonderful man he was disappeared from his body when he died. Now only present in the past and in our memories. But I have found something that does bring me much comfort, and I'd like to share it with you. Maybe you are also an atheist who has had a loved one, who has lost a loved one, and this can help you during your grief. When death is instant, the brain doesn't have a chance to understand or experience its own death. Maybe that can be comforting if you lost a loved one whose death was instant. Knowing that they didn't suffer is comforting on its own. David's death was not instant, and I believe that gave him the opportunity to experience heaven. Hmm. Uh, oh, the chemical processes in the brain. I just spent four paragraphs explaining that I don't believe in heaven, uh, but that is a supernatural heaven, the kind that survives your death. When the brain is shutting down in the process of death, what is referred to as a near-death experience can occur. This process is usually described as an overwhelming sense of peace, warmth, love. Some people relieve, relive major life events or see relatives that have passed. For David, I imagine he experienced a sense of peace and calm. He was the kind of person who had difficulty relaxing and being at peace. I believe this process for him gave him the peace that he sought. What other word can you use for an experience like that but heaven? Hmm. Uh, If heaven is not a place but a process that the brain experiences during its own death, then surely David experienced it. People who have come back from when he slipped through have described exactly the same experiences. If we can describe the process of meditation as going to a happy place, then we can describe the process that occurs during death as going to heaven. My best friend passed away two two weeks ago. I believe he went to heaven. That's cute. I'm sorry to hear that. He seems like a nice person. It does. I mean, that is an interesting way to think about when people say they have near-death experiences and seeing heaven. Yeah, that is sweet. Crying in the club chat? Yeah, I don't know. Expectations shattered on what this was. (laughs) You're sadder now. So, I mean, for me, life and death is so fascinating. You know, we only exist for like, you know, a, a, a little blip, you know? Yeah, absolutely, Silfweed. Thanks for writing it. We only live for like uh, just a, you know, just a little bit of time. And so I feel there's a, I don't know about obligation, because that's like too strong and I don't want to put that on anybody else. I feel like, I feel like we, ha- we owe it to each other in some way 
to try to live together, you know, while we're do- while we're living, <laughs> to do to live a little bit together, uh, to try stuff, to uh, express ourselves in in ways that are unique to ourselves, and to try to help other people do that as well and, and experience life. And I don't know, I, you know, we're 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 literally all star stuff, and that's pretty dope. We're part we're all the particles that make up you have made up other stuff before and like literally like when you eat an oreo <laughs> you become part of the oreo and then part of it's your shit and then that shit is eaten uh and you know we're 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 all together we're one big fucking organism really when you think about it on a long enough time scale we would just look like if you just zoomed out we would just look like little people little sims you know <laughs> Still hard to rationalize why I do these things and grief that don't make sense, but I appreciate you making me feel more normal for it. I think it's definitely normal. I don't think... I (laughs) I think it's really important to remember that our little ape brains are not, in fact, logic machines, and that's why this magic thinking is even prevalent at all, is because, like, you want to talk to your your friend you miss? That's so normal. Of course. You want to express yourself in a space... But there's nothing to express yourself to, so you just say it to an empty room. Very normal. Hope one day I can feel okay about death for now. The thought just sends me spiraling. It's not so much death. It's it's more like, I hope I do enough living before I die, right? I I don't understand not wanting to live. <laughs> not in like a... Not in, like, a non-suicidal way. Like, I don't understand not wanting to... Even if you're not, like, fucking skydiving or whatever. You know, I don't, I don't want to skydive. I'm scared of heights. But, like, I don't know. I feel like I feel like a lot of people wallow in what would otherwise be, like, fine. But it's a, sometimes it's the energy they don't put into themselves. Like, they don't, like, give themselves the amount of, the amount of, like, yeah, energy. I think it's energy. Rationality is part of being human. We're just animals. You can't expect perfect logical thoughts. Oh, yeah.